Hello? Hello? Who's out there? Anybody? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Get in here. Hello? Hello? We have a live trailer to watch. Go! Go! Okay. I'm letting people gather for a brief, brief second. And then we gotta watch this shit. We'll watch it multiple times. Watch it multiple times. So let's watch the first one. First, first watch together. Land ships? Oh, God. There's fucking land ships. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll watch it. We'll watch it multiple times over the course of the stream. Stay as long as you like. Leave whenever you wish. All right, all right. I'm gonna go back. I'll go back through. I'll go back through and like look at all of the individual units at some point. We'll probably, we'll probably watch it one more time straight through as people have just, uh, or as people are trickling in, but. All right, initial, initial thoughts. Uh, it's not as bad as I feared it might be. Like, the content is not as bad as I feared it might be. Like, I don't see a whole lot of things that could turn into mortise engines or, or blobs or anything. Um, but it's also not everything I would have wished for. In fact, we got two of the units that I absolutely didn't want. <laughs> we got the Thunder Barge, we got the Land Ships. Which, like, I doubt they'll be OP. Maybe they will. But I doubt they. I doubt they will. I. I think they'll just be bad. <laughs> All right, watch again. Watch again for the people that are trickling in. So there's Elspeth von Draken, honored purple dragon. So death caster for the empire, we can see that. Cool. The caked up Elspeth, yeah, dude. So then, who is that? Does anybody know who that is? Is that that's not Hellbrass, is it? Or whatever, um, the the champion of the empire. It might be. But that's cl they clearly just went like, here's your empire hero. And then there we can see Plague Ogres. So we're getting Plague Ogres, which is fine. Nurgle could have used the monstrous infantry that's a little faster, so that's going to be fine. 
It's the guy who killed Tarmacon, Bruckner. Huh. Interesting, interesting. All right, so there's Plague Ogres, we can see them. And then this is what, in our interview with Blood Penguin, he was worried about. We're getting the Empire Gisales. So it's the Empire Long Rifles, but they're pretty much Gisales for the Empire. Toad Dragon. Toad Dragon can be, could be cool, could be bad. With most monstrous single entities, it depends on what animations they give it and what price point they put it at. But, like, that could be fine. I'm not complaining about it. We'll just have to see its stats and animations before we know if it's a good or a bad unit. But it's it's fine. And then there's that guy. Parmacon or whatever. I know literally nothing about him. Like, people from Tabletop are freaking out. I don't know who that guy is. And that's Malachi Mikeson, Obviously. The Slayer Engineer. Then his Thunderbard. You can also see Ironsides in the same frame as the Long Rifle. Nice. Thunderbard is going to be like a Sky Junk from Pit Bay. Just a super tanky flying thing. I don't know what you would call that, but I can see its effect. I don't know what it's called, but it's very clearly like a Hellblaster volley gun, but for the dwarves. It's just armor piercing throwing axes, probably at medium range. So that'll be cool. I mean, no issues with that for me. I don't know what this is supposed to show. Like, there's a guy on a chair, but is that a plague ridden on a chair? If, if so, that's not new. But is it really... It This scene could be trying to show off a new mount for Exalted Heroes of Nurgle or something. But that doesn't look like an Exalted Hero on its back, so I wonder if it's more of, like, a goblin big boss. Like, obviously not a goblin, but, like, if, if, if the Exalted Hero of Nurgle is an orc is a black orc big boss, then this could be something of Nurgle that's akin to a goblin big boss. Hello? Oh yeah, this is me, what's up? One second. Um, can I call you back? Okay, at this number? Yep, okay, sorry. I'm just in the middle of something. I'll call you right back. No worries, yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Sorry, that was a phone call I was expecting, but I called him back. Okay, so, but like, he doesn't look like an exalted hero to me, so he looks like a lighter hero of some kind. And then there's the Empire's land ships, which, okay. I'm, I'm less excited about them because the Empire doesn't really need more shooting single entities like war wagons or steam tanks or luminarchs, like they have plenty, but okay, it's fine. It's a cavalry called Rot Knights, gotcha. Soundtrack slaps. Obligatory meme unit. Soundtrack slaps. Um, if I had to rate the three based on what we just went through, I am most excited for what Nurgle got. I am second most excited for what the dwarves got. And the Empire, take it or leave it. Honestly. Like, I don't want to be a shitter, but I'm just like, oh, okay. A death caster. Hooray, we need more death magic in the game. There's not enough Spirit Leech and Fate of Buna going around, guys. Um, so that one I'm kind of meh on. And then the Hawkland wrong, Long Rifles or whatever, the Empire Sharpshooters. It's like, okay, cool. Giselles and Grand Cathay's uh, Crane Gunners are just getting copy-pasted again. That's okay, fine, whatever. Landship is just something that I'm not really that interested in. It's like cool, but I extremely doubt it's going to be any good in um in multiplayer and campaign anything's good so i'm not talking about that so the empire's fine like i'm not negative on any of the dlc right there's nothing in there that i saw that i think will make the game worse now obviously something could be horrendously unbalanced and then it'll make the game worse but um 
assuming everything is moderately balanced in some way, I didn't see anything that's like inherently unfun. So yeah, the Empire was my least favorite out of the three. The Dwarves, I mean, the Thunder Barge will be fun in some of their campaign stuff. Malachi is a very fun character in concept. I could see him being fun in game. And the Dwarves need more legendary lords that are fun because their lords are currently a little weak besides Thoric. And even besides Thoric, it's like all of us are just melee lords on foot. Ooey owie. So at least Malachi will bring something a little different. So I'm pretty excited about Malachi. Uh, the little armor-piercing axe thrower was was neat. I'll have to see how it goes in practice. And then the thunder barge was neat-ish, I guess. I don't see it being particularly good multiplayer because I see it being very feast or famine. Where like if your opponent brought armor-piercing missiles, boom, your thunder barge is worthless. And if they didn't, then you win the game off of them having a bad build. So I don't think it'll be meta-defining, but it's fine. You want to check the forum blog? I don't see anything here. There's nothing here. You lied to me. Um, yeah. And then the Nurgle stuff looked fine. It looks like they're getting those Nurgle Knights you guys were talking about. And... Those look to be a light cavalry option that they need. They're much faster and less armored, it looks like. So that's something Nurgle needed. Um, the Toad Dragon looked like a single entity monster that they kind of need. One that's a little more aggressive and a little less slow and cumbersome. Like, I know slow and cumbersome is Nurgle's thing, but right now all of their single entities just benefit from blobbing. So, it could be cool to have something a little more mobile. It'll kill more infantry quicker or something. Um, and then Plague Ogres also make Nurgle more aggressive. So, I'm, I'm actually quite positive on the Nurgle units I'm seeing. Because it is... We'll see how it's executed, right? But in theory, it gives Nurgle options to be aggressive. Because right now, Nurgle's options are to blob or to abuse healing and chaos knights. And it's like, okay, but th that's maybe two ways to play the game mostly just blobs so they got three options to be more aggressive on the field which is cool steam warhammer three Watch the trailer. Okay. Five new units, a generic lord, a generic hero, and three further regiments for now. There's not a ton of info here. So, yeah, I'll uh, I'll focus up later. But it does look like, as you're saying here from this post, it looks like each faction got five units, so not everything's in the trailer. Give it a release date for the DLC yet? Not that I know. Not that I know of. Anyway, for the people that have been trickling in, here's the trailer one more time, just for your enjoyment.
So there's the trailer. Okay. Let's type on somebody. Dwarves even more toxic now. Great. Mm. Doesn't look like it's coming out in April. I mean, we got a trailer April 9th. That makes me think it's probably coming out in April. Because I can't see them doing a trailer and then releasing it, like, a month away. What all units would the dwarves get then? Well, in the trailer we saw Malachi. So on the Steam page it says they're getting five units, which wouldn't count Malachi. So Malachi's their lord, then they'll apparently get a generic lord and a generic hero. They're getting the Thunder Barge, so that's unit number one. They're getting this crazy axe thrower. That's two. So I don't know what else they're getting, but those are the two shown in the in the trailer. So it was shown in the trailer that I could see for Nurgle was the Toad Dragon. Tarmacon, obviously. Plague Ogres. And then those little wolf calf. Generic Lord and Heroes counts as units. Uh, on the Steam page, it didn't say so. It said the Empire would get five units, a Generic Lord, a Generic Hero, and Elspeth. And then that hero guy that you guys know his name, but I don't. Sick trailer. It is a pretty good trailer. It's a pretty good trailer. Um, like... Just reviewing the trailer, 8, 9 out of 10, somewhere in there, you know, CA always kills them on the trailers. The content that was shown in the trailer, for reference, for reference, on my scale of 10, right, I think a 5 is average. I think anything below a 5 is detrimental, and I think anything above 5 is positive, right? So with that in mind... I'm giving this a 6. The content is like a 6 out of 10. It is positive, right? I'm not like sad this DLC is coming from the units we were shown here. But it's none of the stuff I was like really hoping for. And it's a bunch of the stuff that I think is going to be dog shit multiplayer. Which is what I mostly focus on. So if you're just playing campaign. For campaign it's a 10 out of 10. Because I think any content for campaign is good. Because campaign just is a sandbox where you play around with stuff. So having more toys is always better. I don't think there's any content that's actively bad for campaign. That's just my opinion. But for multiplayer I give it a 6 out of 10. Because I think like. I don't see the Empire using the land ships in reality. I think the DLC is going to come out. People are going to use them for like 3 or 4 days to meme and be ha ha funny. And then they're going to realize the land ships suck ass. And they're going to stop using them. Uh, the long rifles are good for the Empire, maybe bad for the game. Elspeth is good for the Empire, bad for the game. And I didn't see any other Empire troops in this one yet that I could know about. So from what I saw from the trailer, for the Empire, I'm like, mm, this is probably worse for multiplayer. Nurgle stuff, all of Nurgle stuff we saw, I'm positive on for multiplayer. So that's big ups. The Empire was a slight down. Uh, Nurgle's big ups. And then the Dwarf stuff, I think, is a side grade. Malachi will be fun, hopefully it'll be good, and then that little axe thrower, I don't see that being particularly meta or great. It's probably going to be mid-range, and then it's like, well, why would I just take an organ gun? And there's a reason you don't take organ guns anyway. Of course, it could be broken, overpowered, but I'm not going to predict that it is. I'm just going to go off of what things should be balanced around. So the axe thrower seems to fill the same niche as the organ gun, therefore I don't think the dwarves will move up or down much on it. Thunder Barge is just going to... It's going to be like the Sky Junk for Grand Cathay. So it's like, yeah, your opponent needs to bring arm-piercing missiles and they'll be fine. If they don't, they'll lose. Cool. Neither up or down for me on that one. And then that's all I saw in the trailer for the Dwarves. So it's like, okay. So that's why I give it like a 6 out of 10 on content where I'm like, the only one I feel was notably improved in multiplayer was Nurgle. And improved, I mean like for the health of the game, not more overpowered. Because I think the Empire got a bunch of stuff that'll push them up in the meta, but they're already not the best faction, but they're already a top-tier faction. So a, a really good faction getting more buffs for me is actually a negative, because I 
I care more about balanced gameplay and like competitive factions than I do like big unit go burr OP give me more OP stuff so good which is why like and for context Shadows of Change when it first came out was a 2 out of 10 for me because it just made the game wildly unbalanced. All the new stuff was ridiculously pay to win. It was just awful. It was an awful time. So with that in mind, like Shadows of Change being a 2 out of 10, this is a 6. I overall think this will be net positive, just slightly a net positive, where Shadows of Change was a net negative. Shadows of Change 2.0, I don't know. Because so much stuff is broken, but the broken stuff wasn't actually a part of the DLC. It was just a patch. Like... Winged Lancers and Griffin Legion getting that crazy, glorious charge bonus. That's not a part of the DLC, it's just a patch. So do I count that against the Shadows of Change 2.0 just because they did made a really bad balance decision at the same time as releasing the second part of a DLC? Because you don't need the DLC to get the broken Kislevite um, cavalry. Okay, there's that. The Zinch changes in Shadows of Change 2.0 were positive. I think Centigors of Zinch are a very fun and interactive unit. They have strong. They they can be strong, but you have to set them up. And if you ever get them caught out, they'll die and they're expensive. So good unit, very fun. Um, a lot of the Zinch stuff was good and fun. None of it was really that toxic. The new Kislev stuff was all pretty stupid. The Frostworm is literally unusable. Zarina's Chariot is banned in every tournament because it's completely broken, like not interactive at all. The Kislevite Unbreakable Halberds are really fucking busted, too. So it's kind of like, okay. So I don't know. Shadows Change 2.0. Overall, I'd give like a 4 out of 10. So far off this trailer, Thrones of Decay is going to be a better DLC than the last 1.5 DLCs we've gotten. Maybe. Let's watch it another time, just for people who are popping in. But if you're like, dude, don't watch it for a fourth time, it's, you can go, like, you can leave, it's fine. I'm just kind of running this for people who haven't seen it yet. Demigraph Hero cool or not? It's cool. I don't see a long rifle unit though, that dude with the scoped rifle is definitely a master engineer. Hang on, they're about to line up on the wall. So he's got it he's got some boys with him. So that's why I assumed it was a whole unit. 
Ready for a Nurgle caster hero in the Warriors of Chaos roster? Oh, God. What dragon is this? Uh, I believe it's a named dragon that only Elspeth rides. I don't think the Empire's going to have a generic version of it. Was there a release date on this? No, no, no. But, like, I assume... You could be right that this is maybe a hero of the Empire with a sniper rifle, which I'll go down that road in a second, but I do believe that it's going to be the Hawkland long rifles. Just because it'd be weird not to put them in at this point. If you're going to have a hero that does it, then why not also have the, the long rifles? Um, but Mr. J, let's pretend you're right, because you could be. This is all speculation, like... Now that you mention it, he could be a hero. I hope he's not, and here's here's the issue. He's either going to be dog shit, or he's going to make the Witch Hunter never viable. And my problem with that is the Witch Hunter is already kind of supposed to be the Empire's sort of pseudo-sniper unit. I know he's hybrid, but what's the point? Like, the complaints about the Witch Hunter is the only way to make him viable is to give him longer range and better accuracy or a harder-hitting missile attack. Or you might as well have taken a melee hero because then he's just going to be a melee hero. But if you give the Empire a dedicated sniper hero and then uh, better dedicated melee heroes, then the Witch Hunter is just like, okay, well, now, I, now I'm now i useless and I don't think I could ever be balanced back into the game. So I kind of hope that's not true. Now, if they release a long rifle hero, then I hope the long rifle hero is good. I don't hope that he's dog shit so that he and the Witch Hunter are both dog shit together. Um... But yeah, like, my love of Witch Hunters, because they're my favorite. Witch Hunters are my favorite aesthetic thing about the Empire. In the books I read about the Empire, I'm always excited when the, the Witch Hunters get involved. I just think they're fun. Um, Saltspire is my favorite Vermintide character. So, like, the Witch Hunter bias in me is like, dude, don't get a good ranged hero for the Empire and then a good melee hero and just do my boy Witch Hunter dirty. Like, I've been praying for Witch Hunter buffs forever. But, yeah, I could see it. I'd much prefer the Hawkland Long Rifles instead of a Long Rifle Hero. Because Long Rifle Heroes suffer the Oxyadl problem. Oxyadl, when he was first released, was super toxic. Like, completely toxic, just awful. Just an awful character to play with. Like, he could kill anything. He was a fine melee combatant. Sure, he was squishy in theory, but he got knocked over all the time, so he didn't take any damage. And, oh my god. Or... You go to Oxyadl now, where he does no damage, barely ever hits anything, and if anybody gets onto him, he instantly dies. Like, Alethanar is the same way. Marcus Wolfhart's the same way, but he has a bound net, which is why people still take him. So when you do single-entity ranged infantry characters, I have never seen it. It might it, It's theoretically possible for them to be balanced, but I've never seen it. They're either t terrible or super toxic. Because if they do enough damage to be viable then the fact that they're a foot character completely fucks you because you can't kill foot characters you can't like there's so many janky things about foot characters they get knocked around by things they get they go flying through the air half the time so you can't deal with it or if their range attack is low enough that you can ignore them throughout the game and deal with them last or just army loss them like oxyadl currently then there's no reason to take that unit so i'm super nervous if it is a hero that there's that it's not going to be a good thing, which is why I hope it's the Hawkwood Long Rifles. Because the Long Rifles, like Gisales and Crane Gunners and stuff, Cavalry destroys those guys. Infantry kills them if they get on top of them. Fate of Unit can deal with them. There's a lot of stuff that, like, foot infantry units are not nearly as janky as foot characters are. And that's where I get concerned. You could be right, I just hope you're not. The other rifleman had a repeater rifle, so it's probably different unit iron sides. Someone else said that word too, I guess they are. I mean the DLC did say it's null centered, so I could see. Honestly, I don't see why it's not possible to get the long rifles and the iron sides. Iron sides are more of a blunderbuss type unit, like the Castor blunderbuss of the Iron Hail Gunners, and then um, 
long rifles would be more of a Giselle or Crane Gunner type unit. When enabling melee versus knockdown, things fish the issue of it as its own problems. It might have the problem of making foot characters, like, bad. But I don't think that's necessarily a terrible thing. I think foot characters should be cheap, and mounted characters should be, like, good at their jobs. But right now you have an issue of, if a foot character is ever good at their job, they're also cheap. And then they get knocked around all the time, just sucks. Mouse posted leaf unit Okay, so somebody, not me, but leaks some regiments of renown. That can kind of help here. Um, looks like we have some Slayer variants. Cool. And then, like, a Maneater pistol, but for dwarves. And then just a dwarf with a big-ass gun, which I don't know what that even is. For Nurgle, I see a Soul Grinder ROR, so that's not really new for our intents. And then a Plague Drone ROR, which is not new for our intents, but the, one of those Wolf Knights is getting an ROR. And then this one, I, that looks like a Spearman ROR to me. Because, like, there's a bunch of spears in the background. He might maybe possibly be holding a rifle. It looks like just a blunt stick. But, yeah, some sort of spearman ROR. And then there's a long rifle here. And this is a Regiment of Renown leak, apparently. So I'm guessing that's a Hawkland long rifle or a handgunner variant. It could be just an ROR of the handgunners that has longer range. But that definitely looks like a sniper to me. And then the landship ROR, and it looks doofy. <laughs> Just the color scheme makes it look really silly to me. It's long drawn Slayer Pirates. I was saying it'll function like a Maneater pistol, was what I was trying to say. Like, melee and ranged combined, but probably a high price point. Hawkland long rifle but dressed in sterling colors for some reason. Dude, I don't know. I just work here. Can we watch? <laughs> I don't know why that's there. I also love this, like, Total Warhammer 3, and it's like, hey, you want a VTuber? And I'm like, nah, dude. If I ever click on any VTuber shit, that's all you're going to recommend to me for the rest of time. So, no. No thanks. Mercy the Same man. We, no, Warriors and Cats have a different confederation mechanic to Noska. Noska has the same confederation mechanic as... Um, oh, he's reading the patch. What a nerd. Only nerds read patches. So yeah, it was it was good. It was a good trailer.
It was a good trailer. We liked it. Click VTuber Total War? No. No! We can't! Alright, one more trailer watch, then I'll shut her down. Look at the text with the units leaked. What what text with the unit leaked? What? There's no text. I was just sent pictures. Someone posted all of the units in your Discord of the DLC. Oh! I see it. I see what you're talking about. Uh, he didn't post the Empire. Okay. Alright. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, the Empire ranks are being boasted by the Marienburg Landship, Steam Tank Volley Gun, Nuln Ironside, Hawkland Long Rifles! Hawkland Long Rifles! Where is he? Mr. J! Get in here! Mr. J! Now, Mr. J. I'm disappointed with your performance today because you doubted human boy of ever being correct. And it has been learned today that I was correct. The Hawkland Long Rifles will not be a hero, as you so rudely implied could be a possibility. It is not a possibility because I didn't say it could be. And I am never wrong. Hawkland Long Rifles, Knights of the Black Rose, which we didn't see in the trailer, unless those were the Demigriff Knights at the very end. Master Engineer Lord, Engineer Hero. Okay, the Master Engineer Lord or the Engineer Hero could have been the guy we saw in the battlements, Mr. J, but it wasn't because I'm right and you're wrong. But it could have been. You could be right, but you weren't. No, Mr. J, no. Don't defend yourself. That's not what we do here. We agree with the streamer man. You nod your head. You say, yes, streamer man. You're right, streamer man. Uh, Wei, Landship gives you hope of the Thunder Barge for the Dowie. Wei, you didn't watch the trailer, did you? <laughs> The Thunder Barge is definitely there. <laughs> Thunder Barge is very much there. Anyway, and the indomitable Theodore Bruckner, legendary hero. Cool. For the dwarves, they get Gargrim Iron Fist, legendary hero. Demon Slayer Lord, Dragon Slayer Hero, Doom Seekers, Goblin Hewer, Thunder Barge, Grudge Raker, Grudge Raker Thunderers, and Slayer Pirate. And Nurgle gets Kaizik the Befouled, Legendary Hero, Chaos Lord of Nurgle, Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle Hero, Plague Ogres, Rot Knights, Toad Dragons, Pestigores, and Bile Trolls. No info on the generic Lord and Hero, though. Um, it's the it's the Slayer, isn't it? The Demon Slayer is a Lord, and the dra Dragon Slayer is a Hero. Yeah. There we go. This is for Wei. Thanks, Wei. Mr. J, of course I'm joking. I I appreciate you and I'm just I'm just having a bit of fun, but you're you're right.
I say this... Okay, when I say this time when I use stupid, I don't mean bad for the game, okay? Like, I just have- I have a take, I have a take, but I don't- I don't wish the land barges didn't exist. I don't mean this as if they look like OP or underpowered. We don't know yet. But can I just say, they look stupid. They look so stupid. And if you like them, that's fine. But I'm allowed to think these things look just dumb as hell. What is going on here? Look at how tiny the fucking wheels in the front are. The huge ones are in the back, that's fine. But the ones in the front need to be at least like 20% larger or something. It looks like it's on little, little teeny tiny cart wheels supporting this massive ship. And then why is the front so much longer than the rest of the boat? And again, it's it's accurate to what they were in tabletop and in lore and all that stuff, but they can still look stupid. And what, why, why, and I know that's the silliness of it, but why bother with a wooden cart on land with all these guns on it? Like, like it's just a giant target. Can't you just set it on fire? It's not even made out of metal. What is this shit? It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. And it's not that I don't wish it was in this DLC. I wish other things were in this DLC, but now that we're getting it, it's fine. It's whatever. It just looks stupid. It's a stupid looking thing, and I'm allowed to have that opinion. I'm excited to play with it. I think it'll be a little bit of fun, a little hee hee ha ha here and there, but it looks stupid as hell. <laughs> Empire Engineering, it's like a wheelchair. Yeah. So let's, now, this isn't about that, but about the leak. We just went over all the units. Let me redo my analysis, because I was only doing my analysis on the stuff I saw in the trailer, but if we have the leak units, let me see how I feel about it. So Maryburg Landship and a steam tank volley gun for the Empire. Now those aside, I don't think they're going to be particularly amazing. I could see the steam tank volley, but volley gun actually being, like, viable. I could see that being honestly viable. I don't think it'll be OP, but it'll be okay. Null iron sides will be overpowered. Almost all blunderbusses are super meta and great right now. And the Empire really didn't need too much more to be meta. Um... So I think the Null and Iron Sides will be amazing. I think the Hawkland Long Rifles will be pretty amazing. Knights of the Black Rose, I know nothing about them, so I can't really judge. It's more knights, but it's like, most of the Empire Knights are pretty good, so I'd assume it's good, but I don't think it'll be meta-defining unless they're over-tooled. Master Engineer, Lord and Engineer Hero are probably both going to be bad. Um, ranged Lords generally aren't doing great right now, so I doubt you'll see them over like Karl Franz or a Mage of some kind. And then Theodore Bruckner, I also strongly doubt he's going to be any good. Like, not to be a dick about it, but just look at the last couple Melee Heroes CA released, and they're, you don't see any of them in, in competitive. Because they're usually overpriced or just underwhelming. Like, Aikold Hellbrass isn't really that good, but he's the most usable of the Melee Heroes recently. Um, like, that Golden Knight from Shadows of Change 2.0. When was the last time you saw her? Never. She's way too expensive and not that good. Um, so I don't think Theodore will be, like, amazing. For the dwarves, now that I can see what all their stuff is, um, I don't know who Gargrim Iron Fist is, so I can't really comment on what he does. I literally don't know, is he an engineer, is he a slayer, what are we doing? Demon Slayer Lord and Dragon Slayer Hero? It depends. If the Demon Slayer is just an unbreakable lord but he's much cheaper than Ungrim. Maybe you'll see him taken, but he's just going to be... It's going to be another foot character for the dwarves, which they already have a ton of. So I don't think those will be meta-defining. They might be okay, but I don't think they'll shape... I don't think they'll change too much with the dwarves' place on, like, a tier list. So I don't think they'll change too much. Doomseekers, I don't know what that means. We already have slayers, and we already have armor-piercing slayers and giant slayers. What are doomseekers? Are they armor-piercing anti-infantry slayers? I don't know. Depending on the price point, I don't see them really changing the way dwarves move up the tier list. They might be fine, but I don't think they're going to change anything, so whatever. Goblin Hewer, I don't think changes anything. It's probably going to be a mid-range armor-piercing artillery, which they already have other versions of. Thunder Barge, I don't see changing anything. Grudge Raker Thunderers and Slayer Pirates could be a lot better at the making the dwarven box like more unbreakable. So I think the DLC can't hurt the dwarves meta-wise. But I don't think it changes their play style at all, so I'm overall really meh on it. But it'll probably move dwarves up from B to like A tier. Probably. 
Nurgle's stuff I'm most, most excited about. Kaizik, the befouled legendary hero, and the Chaos Lord of Nurgle. Not really going to change their playstyle too much. But um, Plague Ogres, Rot Knights, Toad Dragons are the three that I'm really looking at to change how they play. Bile Trolls could also be pretty good. And Pestigors, it depends. If Pestigors are a Bestigore rework, trash. Because Nurgle already has a ton of slow armored infantry. So what are they going to do with more slow armored infantry? If Pestigors are a Gore Herd rework or an Ungor Herd rework, giving Nurgle the medium and light infantry it desperately needs, then that's really going to move them up the meta. So it depends on what a Pestigore is, and it depends on what the Rot Knights are. Because Rot Knights, if they're a light cav, if they're faster than Chaos Knights and a little bit cheaper, um, that's huge. If they're another elite cav, if they're more expensive or as expensive as Chaos Knights and they're heavily armored and stuff, it's pretty whatever. Like, you already have Chaos Knights of Nurgle that are really good. Chaos Knights in general are really good. So what Nurgle needs, Nurgle doesn't need more stuff that it already has. It already has heavy infantry that are good. It already has heavy cavalry that's good. What it needs is better monsters. It needs better light, it needs any light infantry that's not a fucking Nurgling. And it needs, um... I said light cav, light infantry, and then we could use some fast monstrous infantry, things like that. So Nurgle needs to fill in gaps in his roster. He doesn't need more heavy stuff. So if Rot Knights are heavy cav and Pestigors are heavy infantry, then Nurgle's not going to benefit from this DLC as much as he might otherwise. Because he's just not. Like, you can have the best of something in the whole world, but if you're a one-trick pony, your opponent loading into you knows what to expect, and they're just going to counter it. That's why Dwarves into Skaven is such a bad matchup. Is because the Dwarves are like, We are so good at heavy infantry and holding our position! And the Skaven are like, Well, we're really good at killing people who stand still. So, get fucked, idiot. And it's like, yeah. So if Nurgle just gets more heavy cab and more heavy infantry, it's like, Do you have armor-piercing missiles? You win. Do you not? You lose. Okay. Same metric you currently have. Rot Knights are mounted on Toad Dragons? Then what was on that uh, little wolf thing? I thought that was what a Rot Knight would be. I, I haven't played tabletop, so I don't know. Most of the tabletop people... Most of the tabletop people are, are schooling me right now. Iron size uses repeater rifles, not shotguns. They're just a regular gun that shoots faster. Oh! Try and grin. That could be interesting. I don't think, if that's true, I don't think they'll be particularly strong in multiplayer, but I think that would be more fun. Love the dwarf voice, even boy. Thanks. Rot Knights never had a model, apparently. Huh. Huh. But yeah, a lot of the Game 3 factions came out with the same issue in that their elite stuff was all really good and really well put together. Like, Chosen of Corn with the weapons are amazing. Chosen of Slanesh with their Hell Scourges are amazing for their what they do. Chosen of Nurgle, Chaos Wars of Nurgle, all these things are really good. And then it's like, hey bro, you're a, your entire army is 300 models. And they go, yeah, so? All right, I'm just going to spread out and shoot you then. You can't do that. And if you look at my land battle tier list, you'll notice a lot of Game 3 factions are towards the bottom. And that's why it's just like... They came out with a design philosophy of make all the coolest, most elite units we can. And it's like, that's nice, but you know a, a good competitive army has one or two elite things, right? It's not all elite. And CA was like, nah, dude, just take all elite shit. What's the worst that could happen? Ah, oh, fuck, they all died instantly. <laughs> Where are the rune golems? I am a little disappointed we don't get rune golems. I know some people in my Discord didn't want rune golems, but I, I really like the dwarven aesthetic and voice lines, and I just want a reason to play dwarves outside of... Um, I want a reason to play dwarves without a box.
Lack of Celestial Huracanum is weird. Not necessarily bad, but a weird omission. We have 93 people here pumping up to 100 every once in a while. Just in case any of you haven't seen the trailer, I will view it one more time. And then I'll, um, and then I'll log off because we've been sitting here and talking about this trailer for like an hour. Hold on. Acidic Devil Dog just ruined my whole day. And it's not his fault, but he's probably right, and I really doubt CA thought about it. Looks like an Empire Engineer to resupply ammunition. Oh god, you're probably right, but that shouldn't be true! Please not War Wagons with infinite ammo! Please! The only thing that War Wagons ever do now is finally run out of ammo every once in a while and then die when they have to act like chariots. Please don't give the Empire restock! Not with War Wagons in their current state. That sounds like the stupidest, most toxic, most boring fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And you're probably right, Acidic. God damn it! Why did you have to bring that up? Like, you're right, I didn't think of it, but damn it! More ammo for the Sunmaker? Oh god, yeah, you're right. There's a lot of Empire stuff that's balanced around having shitty ammunition amounts. And hell, the War Wagon even has a crazy high amount of ammunition, but at least it eventually runs out. That's awful. That is awful, and you're so right. Ugh. How sad. I had an Elspeth bot, but I'll save it till after the trailer. So, I just had a thought um, th with Elspeth coming out that I could 100% see us all talking about, like, well, hey guys, like, at least a dragon deathcaster for the Empire. Death is a very strong lore of magic. Um, and the Empire doesn't usually have dragons and breath attacks, but, like, at least she doesn't have healing or she'll have to get uh, a second mage to offer her healing, which is a lot of cost, guys. I could see on release CAs like, well, we were worried she'd be a little squishy, so we gave her a special bound item that's like the blood chalice of Isabella, and it just like heals her every once in a while, because you can't release a new character after, what was it like, a character after 2022 without self-healing, that's just impossible, because they might die someday, and that's incorrect. I'm assuming she'll be expensive. I mean, maybe. Ugh. I mean, overall, I still think it'll be fun. I don't know if it'll be balanced. We'll see. I, uh... I don't know what, um... Watch them give the life wizard a forest dragon, yeah. I don't know what to talk about. I, it, NDA stuff is complicated, but...
If this turns into a podcast, I'll probably say like several things I'm not supposed to, so I'll just shut her down. Um, if you care, in two hours we have another stream of a new player tournament. You can pop by there, catch some gameplay of the live patch, but then also talk to me about trailer stuff, I suppose. I've given all my thoughts here, though, that I really can. We, we, we even went through the leaked units, which I didn't leak them. I didn't leak them. It's been discussed. Um, so content creators can talk about leaks other people provide, but you can't provide the leaks. So it's like, all right, well, somebody else leaked this shit, so I'll talk about it because it exists, but it's not my fault. Anyway. Ugh. Someone just linked me Elspeth's wiki. So one second. All right. So Pale Scythe. Pale Scythe has made more shadow than substance. This weapon is said to be a Von Draken's own making and is attuned to the power of Shaiish, purple wind of magic, focusing on constraining your will. This hourglass, and then Death's Timekeeper. This hourglass is an ancient and storied artifact, for it is said to contain as much measure, measuring sand and musty remains of a dear, dead god of old. And Von Draken has spent much of her unnaturally long life studying its mysteries. With it, she has perfected some measure of control over time and death itself. That doesn't sound great. That doesn't sound great. That sounds like another 44% ward save item or maybe a heal. Doesn't sound like a smart thing. Blink us more secrets in Morse code. Nah, dude. Nah, I can't do that. Pope Saruman the first. Alright. That'll get me demonetized because from Lord of the Rings, Hammond. How dare you? Like the videos, you heathens? I do like, look from my perspective, YouTube is a buggy mess. And if you need more proof, uh, remember that I had a video out an out two hours ago and it cut out halfway through because YouTube didn't buffer it correctly. Look at this live thing right now. This little ticker keeps updating saying 81 people are watching, but there's supposedly only one like on the video and it's mine. Mmm, YouTube, you're killing it. Mmm. But if I refresh, oh shit, there's 56 likes, guys. YouTube's not, uh, YouTube's not always the best platform. It has issues. Anyway, if you care, um, let's, let's do some self-promotion here real quick. So then go to your videos. If, uh, if you care, you can view all of my content that I've posted until April 20th. If you become a member of our channel or whatever. Um, we have some channel membership shit that can let you get in here nice and early and access all of our content as soon as I post it. A harmless laugh? What could a harmless laugh be? You have to give me money to find out. You have to. If you don't give me money, how can I afford to buy things? Drugs, not drugs. Drugs, not drugs. Why would I do that? I wouldn't do drugs. There's Alethanar replays in here. What? There's two Alethanar replays in here. What? How could you go even another 45 seconds without knowing? There's a Kislev replay in here. That's actually super rare because it's hard to find a Kislev game that isn't a one-sided stomp. Can Human Boy overcome the Dark Elves? You have to know! This is content you can't wait for! So you have to give me money to get it. It's not like it's gonna come out for free at a scheduled time in the future. April 18th, April 17th. It's not like there's a, there's a video every day at 8 a.m. that's free. But if you can't wait, if you're just itching for more Human Boy content constantly, because I don't put out enough for you for some reason, and you just want to go through all of it, and then you'll have nothing, and at the end, you'll just have nothing. You'll know everything before it happens, and you'll have a months-long dirges where you get no content. You have no filter, no buffer at all. That's fine. If you just want to spam it out like Netflix, like, I'm going to watch Human Boy Season 8. Boom! Bang them all out. 
and then you have no videos for two weeks. That's fine. You can pay money to do so. Otherwise, every video will come out at 8 a.m., like a normal thing. All right. You should do special videos for members only, human boy. I don't really like gating content behind paywalls. It's not my vibe. I had some people that wanted to support the channel, like Looming. Um, so I, I, I just turned on the YouTube membership thing. Um, but like, I don't know, man. I've never been the type to really do that monetized stuff. Dude, my Patreon has been up forever, and I have some lovely patrons. They're the best people. And, like, the rewards are literally, I don't know, I might ask you a question or a poll once in a while, but uh, it's whatever. Like, I'm really bad at offering those rewards, because then it's like, well, if I offer it to some people, then other people don't get it, and that feels bad. And I do everything on YouTube. Like, when I'm a YouTube viewer, I, I don't. I, I do everything for free. I offer a super chat once in a while, but, like, I'm not a premium member of anything. So I'm like, man, I'd feel like shit if I couldn't watch the thing. Especially, where where was it? Uh, there's, like, this uh, laughing thing. Yeah. A school These fucking things. Game Changer shorts. I went onto their site to check out, like, the full episodes of Game Changers, and it's, like, eight ninety nine. I'm probably misremembering it, but it was, like, eight ninety nine a month. And I'm like, okay, dude, I like your channel, but... Not that much, but you can't watch the full episodes without paying them that much a month, and it's like, fuck, man. I just want to enjoy the content. So, anyway. So when I when I made my own channel, I'm like, well, I don't want to pay all a bunch of content because I fucking hate it when other things do that. All right. That's it for the stream. Remember, if you want more Human Boy content and to talk to me more about the DLC and all that shit, in two hours we'll have a new player tournament. If you are a new player or newer to Total War multiplayer... Um, you can go to TotalTavern.com, that's Turin's website, and every week I post a new player tournament here at varying time zones. Bim, bam, boom, this is number 51. We posted 51 new player tournaments. That's 50 that you missed out on, but you can hop into 51. It's today at 12 CST, you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, for me it is 10 a.m. right now, so that's in two hours. We already have 16 signups, but there's room for a couple more. So hop on in there, stream will be at that time too. Sounds good? Sounds good. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.